My name is Benjamin Faust, and today we're going to talk about how do we model things in the economy. The economy is very complicated. You've got a lot of moving parts, and so we somewhat have to simplify it in order to understand it, to talk about it, to think about it. So we use models. I've got a couple of samples of models here. Let's say you're making a model of an airplane. Right here I have a folded uh, paper airplane, and this paper airplane is good as a model um, in one way, but not good in another way. First of all, does it look like the kind of airplane that you would fly if you were flying commercial? Absolutely not. So it's not a good model as far as looking like an airplane, but it is a good model as far as being able to get some distance going when you launch it. So it's an excellent model perhaps for flight or for part of a flight, but it's a terrible model as far as looking like it. To contrast that, if you were to get a model airplane from a toy store and make it uh, one pretty much identical to the commercial flyers, it might look like the kind of airplane you take when you go somewhere, but it won't fly if you toss it in the air. So models have limitations, but we use them because it helps us to study economics. Here's another model. This is a model of an H2O molecule. This molecule is good because we can see the structure of how water looks. However, it's a poor model if we're trying to see what water does uh, in action, how it treats the human body when, it's, it's, uh, when you consume it, or how water erodes stones over time. But it's a good model to see how it looks at the very small level. So in economics, we have various models we use, and the models we use have various limitations. My name is Benjamin Faust and I love learning. I hope you do too and if you enjoy learning about economics, like and subscribe for more content.